cores or cross origin resource sharing, it's a technology built into browsers that lets two sites exchange information safely and even in the presence of the same origin policy. Normally, the same origin policy will allow any site to send HTTP requests to any others, but blocks the responses coming back if they're in different domains. And this is for security reasons, because having unrestricted data come back from anywhere on the web into a user's browser would definitely make for an insecure user experience. Course technology allows sites to exchange information safely and responsibly by making exceptions to the same origin policy. And the site that has the data, the API, is the one who's in control. Usually in a regular request, if we have two different domains, the request would go out from the first domain over to the second domain, and this is never blocked by same origin policy. Same origin policy doesn't block requests, it only blocks responses. So the request would work fine, and the API would receive the request. On a side note, the fact that same origin policy never blocks requests is part of the reason that we have cross-site request forgery along with other reasons like automatic cookie submission and some other conditions. So the request arrives at API and API responds back. The response goes back to user interface with the data in it. However, the browser knows that user interface is in a different domain and blocks the response. Cores or cross-origin resource sharing allows the server to send a permission slip along with the data so that the browser will allow the different domain to interact with the data. And this permission slip is implemented as what's called an access control allow origin header. It's an HTTP response header that you would find in the response along with all the other response headers, sometimes abbreviated ACAO. So imagine that we have a request going from Bob to Alice. We can see that the request is heading over to the API on the alice.com domain. In order for Alice to allow Bob to read this response, Alice would have to put an access control allow origin header, and it would have to have the exact value of the origin, which in this case is the API over at bob.com. Notice also that the scheme HTTP has to be part of the domain specified in the permission slip. In order for servers to implement core securely, they need to maintain an access control list. And this access control list could be thought of as a table Although it doesn't necessarily have to be implemented in a database or even as a table, it could be a flat file or any other format. But the key is, is that the server maintains a list of its friends by domain name, and it also keeps track of how those friends are allowed to interact. To do this, it has to keep track of the methods it's going to allow the friends to call with and the headers that the calling domain is allowed to send in the HTTP requests. Furthermore, because cores does not accept credentials by default, in other words, cookies, the server has to keep track of whether or not it's going to allow a caller to send over cookies, aka credentials, in the request. So let's take a look at that same request from before, but this time with cores in play. User interface sends a request over to API. In order to identify itself, it completes the origin request header with its domain name. Now API can look up the domain name on its access control list to find out whether or not it's going to give permission to user interface. In this case, 
a record is found in the access control list, and apiacme.com includes the access control allow origin header in the response with the domain name so that user interface is allowed to read the data. If we were to look at the actual request and response going back and forth on the wire, they would look something like this. So in this scenario, we have a user interface running in the foo domain, and it's reaching out to the bar domain. So the destination is bar.other, and in the request, we will see a request header named origin that identifies foo.example as the caller. In the response coming back from the server, the server includes an access control allow origin header, and it has not only the exact value of the domain, foo.example, but also includes the scheme, in this case, HTTPS. In the next video, we're gonna take a look at these two request scenarios in a demonstration on an actual website.